Jesus Christ, um, this time as this, that we are, few of us are here at this place to worship the Lord and we all are gathered together uh, remotely to worship our Lord, that God has given this uh, wonderful privilege on the Lord's day to come again in his name um, as one family to to worship him and also to um, to hear his voice and uh, also praise him and thank him for everything that he's doing in our lives and the hope that uh, he has given to his children. Let's continue to um, go through the gospel according to John from John's gospel chapter 14 as we are going to read a few verses from John's gospel chapter 14 verse 1 to verse 6 alternatively. Here um, our Lord is speaking to his uh, beloved disciple, disciples from um, all the way before his um, going to the cross that um, the Lord uh, speaks these comforting words to his disciples. I'm going to read from verse 1, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 1. Also, you follow with me through. <clears throat> verse 1, chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may, or may be also. Verse 4, And whether I go, ye know, and the way you know. Verse 5, Thomas said, saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let us pray and ask the Lord for his grace and the mercy as we uh, look into these scriptures that God may give me also the grace to have the spirit and the utterance and the boldness uh, that uh, he may give unto his children. Let's pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, I come to you, Lord, as I am, Lord, and um, asking you to fill me with your spirit and grace. And Lord, use me as a vessel for your honor that uh, through me, Lord, you speak to your children the words of comfort. As you have spoken to your, your uh, disciples, these beautiful, glorious words of truth, of comfort and uh, strength, Lord, we, we pray and ask that as we look into these words, Lord, help me also as I look into uh, the scriptures, Lord, and speak to your children, uh, that speak to your children through me, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So here the Lord uh, is um, speaking to his um, disciples before his um, uh, suffering that he is going to suffer and be crucified, that he um, predicts to his disciples that all of his disciples are going to leave him. Jesus told them that this very night you shall all fall away on account of me. You shall all offend, you shall all be offended on account of me. For it is written that I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. It says in Matthew 26 verse 31 and 32 speaks that God is, uh, the Lord is speaking to the disciples and saying that all of them will fall away and will be offended because of Christ. It's not a good report to hear when, they, when the disciples gave everything for Christ and they followed him. And here is our Lord in his final days, final hours, I would say, telling um, to his disciples, calling them as little children, but you are going to leave me. And not only just leaving me, but one of you out of one of you, one is going to betray me. He also says that in a short while, I would leave you and where 
I am going, going, you cannot come. Where he is going, you cannot come. That's what they cannot come. That's what our Lord is giving the message to the disciples. Saying, he's predicting, he's also saying clearly that I am going to go and die in Jerusalem in a few days. And uh, I would not only just die, but I would die by crucifixion. I would die during the Passover time. And um, he also predicts in the few verses um, before that we looked last Sunday that a Lord also predicts Peter when Peter said that even if everybody, everybody is not going to follow you, I will follow you. With great affirmation, Peter says that I will lay down my life for you. Jesus clearly predicts Peter's denial, not only once, but Jesus uh, says, Surely, surely, I say unto you, before the cock shall crow, thou, Peter, shall deny me three times. You're going to fail me three times. You're going to deny me three times, is what our Lord is speaking to Peter and also to all of his disciples that they shall leave the Lord and flee from the Lord when the shepherd is struck the sheep of the flock will be scattered is a message that our Lord gives to the disciples and there's a very good reason for the disciples to be troubled when they hear this news that you're going to fail not just um, a little bit, but you're going to fail utterly. There's a way how, like, just imagine that you are trying to do something, you want to um, take an exam or you want to please somebody, and then um, you get the feedback saying that you have, you're going to fail miserably or you going to, you're going to fail or your uh, score is very low. How would you feel? Once you know that you have, you're not doing good, it's natural for people to be troubled. And here, not only that, that here our Lord is saying that I'm going to leave you. So it's like there's very good reason for anyone to hear to know the news that um, you're going to f I'm going to be a failure that they will be troubled and there's very good reason for them to be troubled in their hearts. The Bible tells us that the sorrow filled their hearts. Matthew 26 verse 22 says that the disciples were exceedingly sorrowful. Jesus also says that you shall be offended because of me that I'm going to leave you and this gives them great disappointment. All their hopes, their dreams, and their plans to reign with Christ in this current earthly kingdom are, is like as if it's coming to an end. Like just imagine ourselves that we have a lot of plans and hopes and then all of a sudden then uh, it's all is coming to an end then this is, uh, this is going to be a disappointment if you look at anyone, but here the disciples also have the same disappointment and sorrow that very, they're so exceedingly sorrowful, the Bible tells us that. But Jesus desires that his children and his people should not be uh, troubled in their hearts. Jesus here did not say that uh, I'm very happy that you're troubled and um, you're worried and um, um, and uh, that you also are uh, trying to give me some sympathy and you're trying to support me that I will not let this thing happen as Jesus did not was not pleased with all those things or he did not encourage but Jesus actually was not pleased to see his disciples in this state of fear our Lord did not promise that in this world we will not have any troubles or difficulties. The Bible clearly tells us, in fact, Jesus said in John, the Gospel chapter 16, verse 33, says this, in this world you shall have tribulation, or you, in this world you will go through difficult times, you will go through tr troubling times. 
Jesus said, but I have spoken unto you that through what I have spoken that you will have peace. Peace I give unto you is a message of Christ. So Jesus is, doesn't desire us to be in this state of fear. He is not pleased with what the disciples are going through. He knew what they are going through. He understands them. He also speaks to them as little children. He addresses them as little children just in verse 33 in John's Gospel chapter 13 verse 33 says, Little children, yet for a little while I am with you. And um, after that, even though you try to seek me, uh, you will not find me. But after, I shall reunite with you again, is a message. But they don't get it. The departure of, um, of Christ from the disciples to the disciples is like a great torture for them. They relied on their master for more than three and a half years of ministry. And now the news of his dis, uh, departure and the news of his crucifixion and death was like a sudden uh, blow to them. Like their hearts were uh, in fear and all their hopes are gone. They are now troubled. Now what's going to happen? And they are fully troubled. What's, what about my future? I had so much at stake now. Everything is now... Um, it has come to a stop. In these circumstances, in this situation, our Lord delivers these beautiful, simple, but glorious words of comfort and consolation. These great words, these wonderful words of love and wonderful words of life to his disciples, not only to his disciples, that this, these words that we see here in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 1 to 6, especially saying that, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Words of comfort. Not only that these words end there, but he's also giving this hope of the future that he is going to go to the father's house, and in his father's house there are many mansions. If there were no mansions, I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have told you, but there were many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that there are no mansions. But there is this glorious um, place that is awaiting his children. That Christ is giving this glorious hope. This promise that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, this is a promise that our Lord is giving that I'm going to come back again. That's not the end of a believer. Is to, is to just like um, worry and um, be in this state of fear and end our lives. But we have a hope beyond this life, beyond the, the grave, the glorious hope that Jesus Christ is giving, laying down to his disciples, saying that, you don't let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. And I go there to, to prepare a place for you. If I'm going there to prepare a place for you, I will come back. I will come back and receive you unto myself, unto himself. And where I go, there you may also be. This is the comforting verses that God is giving to his disciples and to his children. That we all should be also be indebted to all the disciples because the disciples were troubled, the Lord spoke these words of comfort, these beautiful words of comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Is such a, um, though it's so simple, it's so prof profound in its um, promises.
that our Lord is consoling and comforting his children, that we should also be thankful for the disciples to go through this situation that God is comforting them, that we can also um, take, cherish these comforting words into our lives. That also Jesus desires that his children, as his children, that we should not be troubled in heart, that we should believe in God. As you believe in God, you should also believe, we should believe in Jesus Christ is a message that um, Christ is giving. When you say believe in God, it could also mean as you believe God, you also believe in me, in Jesus Christ, or to the extent that you believe in God, to the same extent you also believe in Jesus Christ. He here is, no man can say these kind of words unless he is equating himself with God. There are many prophets, there are many teachers that have come into this world, and, uh, but nobody has uh, spoken like this as Christ is saying. Nobody has uh, equating himself with God. Here, many people have come and must have told, have told that believe in God, that God is love, that God is righteous, God is holy, God is, is, um, uh, God is great, and um, trust in God, trust, uh, believe in God, but no, there's no one who has said that believe in God also, with the same belief, trust that you have towards God, also trust in me is very profound. No man can say such words except he is the Son of God or he is God himself. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the very God himself in human flesh, that he came down for a mission to deliver humanity from their sin and from their death. Because of sin, the Bible tells us the wages of sin is is death. But Jesus desires his children to be, not to be in a state of fear, in a state of um, restlessness, and state of disappointment. God here tells us to the troubled world, to his people, saying that trust in the Lord, Trust in God, trust also in me, believe in God, believe in me. Rather than fear, you should believe in me, is a message that Jesus Christ is giving to his disciples, that Jesus Christ is giving to us. This message of comfort, that God will take care of you, that God will be your help, that God will be your strength. So, but it's interesting that, um, can you just believe somebody who is, um, whom you don't know much about him? Can you believe somebody who is not, not known to you? Is it possible to trust somebody here? The, the word believe is not just, I believe in this opinion or that opinion. It's actually putting all of our life at stake to believe in Him, is putting all of our life upon who He is and what He is. So if you say that I believe in somebody, you should also should understand who He is and you should know Him, you should know that person to believe somebody. You should have this personal relationship to believe somebody, to trust a man, to trust someone, you can't just casually say, I believe somebody that you don't even know about him. You have to study him. You have to understand him. You have to know that person. You should have this personal relationship. Only then you can trust him. Here Christ is saying that believe in me, believe in God. But to, to truly believe in somebody that you have to know him. This morning I want to bring to your attention that in order to trust someone that you also have to know him. Especially you have to know him personally. The Bible gives us 
all that we need to know about Jesus Christ. Not just know about Jesus Christ. Through the Spirit of God, through the Holy Spirit, we can know Him in an intimate, personal way. We can have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. John also, John, in 1 John, the Apostle John, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, if you turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, here he says, John, when he's writing to the church, when he was of old age, out of great experience and personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he is writing this epistle to God's people, he says that, and we know that the Son of God is come, that Jesus Christ has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. That we may know that who is true God, that we may know that we are in him and in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life is the message of Apostle John, that Jesus Christ has come to make himself known to us, to give us an understanding of who he is and what he is, so that we can have this personal relationship. True Christianity is not just knowing a little bit about something, a little bit about Jesus, but true Christianity is having this personal understanding, personal relationship. That's the only way that we can trust him. That's the only way that we can believe in God. That's the only way that we can receive his blessings of forgiveness and um, being with him forever and ever. As we see that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. True understanding is not just something that you can um, have by your own uh, strength. The Bible tells us that true understanding is a gift of God through the Holy Spirit, which is a gift that God gives to us that we can able to understand who this God is and what he, who really is and what is it that we need to do to be in right relationship with God. The Bible tells us that only through the Holy Spirit only through the Spirit of God can we understand spiritual things. Dear ones, this morning I want you to challenge you is that do you truly have the Spirit of God that leads you into all truth? Do you truly have the Spirit of God which is a gift from God that is freely given to you that leads you into all truth? The Bible tells us in John's Gospel chapter 14 verse 26 says that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will lead you and teach you into all truth and bring you into remembrance. This Spirit that dwells in you is the Spirit of truth that makes us remember, that teaches us, that leads us, that, that also um, makes us follow Him. Bible tells us that if we repent and be baptized, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, let's read this, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter, the same Peter who denied Jesus Christ after he has received the gift of the Holy Spirit, he is speaking boldly to many people, saying, Peter said, unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit is not something that um, you have inherently, but it is a gift that God gives us to his people when you repent and confess your sins and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. God gives us the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that we can understand the things of God. We can understand who God is. We can understand that we are His children and we can hear His voice. 
So the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, we are united into the body of Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, says that through the Spirit of God, we become one in Christ, in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free or having been made to drink into that one Spirit, we are united or we are made one in Christ Jesus through the Spirit of God. We are sealed by the Spirit of Truth, whereby we are sealed unto the Spirit of Truth or by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says that we are, we are sealed that we are baptized, we are born again by the Spirit and um, by truth. Um, Jesus as speaking to Nicodemus says that unless you are born again, unless you are born of the Word of God and by the Spirit of God, by water and by Spirit. With the water is, is, is point a referencing to the Word of God as Peter also said that we are born again not of, of perishable things, but we are born again by the incorruptible, by the word, the living word of God, we are born again in First Peter chapter 1, speaking about a child of God that is made new by the Spirit of God, that uh, who is baptized. Only then we can trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Only then through the promise. So, but our response should be to repent and come to Christ. We see this great promise in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Sorry, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had, hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If thou shalt Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Here, uh, Paul is saying that you shall be saved from your sins, that you shall be called as his child. With the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And this is something that when you do this, God is faithful to give you the spirit of truth, the spirit of, of um, truth that enables you to go according to his word, to, that enables you to walk in truth um, so that you, you un can understand the things of God. The same truth in the First John chapter 1, First John chapter 1 verse 20 also, John is saying the same truth. He's saying, but ye have an auction from the Holy One so that you may know all things. You, ha you have an anointment, you have a seal or you have a baptism by the Spirit of God that you can know the truth. No one has to teach you what is truth. The Spirit himself will lead you into all truth through the Spirit of God when you truly confess when we, when we confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you are saved by the grace of God. The Bible says the same thing in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we trust and believe, we have peace with God. Here, Jesus is telling to his disciples, that if we trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we know him personally, then God is going to give you this great assurance. Though in this world you might, have, you might go through difficult times, the peace of God will reign in your hearts. God's peace will be in you. And also there is this future glorious reunion that 
Jesus is giving to his children, saying that in my father's house are many mansions. So here God is saying that there is a permanent dwelling place. The one that we are right now is not a permanent place. The place that we are living in is not a continuous dwelling place. Hebrews, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 14 says, For there have we no, for here we have we no continuing city, for we, we seek for one that is to come. We seek for one that is to come. Because this place that we live, there is, it's not permanent. Though you might think that this, this place, this world, will, you can live in this world forever and ever, our stay is permanent, but it is not. You can see in this current situation itself what we are going through. If you look at this current situation, the whole world is going through such unprecedented times. All the people, if, if you just watch the news, all the people are in great fear. There is so much panic and insecurity in this world. Their hearts are, are troubled and fearful. This passage this morning is very appropriate for these current times. As Jesus is saying, when we are going through such chaos everywhere, Jesus, our Lord, is telling, let not your heart be troubled. This is like a, not just like a, this is not like a promise. This is a, a, a commandment from our Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Whatever that's going on in this world, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not feed your hearts with fear, but feed your hearts with God's love, with thinking about God, who God is, that God is with us, God is for us, God is our refuge, God is our strength, a present help in time of need, therefore will we not fear. As the psalmist in Psalm 46 verse 1 onwards says, God is our refuge and strength, a very, a very present help in the time of need. A very present is, is at the right time, when we need it, He is there for you. No one else can do it like how God can do that He is ever present with us to help us, especially this, during this time. It's such an appropriate message, such an appropriate um, word for us. When the people in this world are in, in, um, in panic, their hearts are troubled and fearful, they want to calm their fear with some um, unreasonable uh, things. They want you to buy certain things. Um, it's such a frenzy that uh, when you see that uh, the bathroom tissues are completely out of stock, it's, there's no reason that people have bought so much um, bathroom paper, uh, tissues that they can use it for an year. It's um, so much have they has 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 been sold out that uh, after a couple of months when everything is resolved you can find like lots of bathroom tissues everywhere in all stores because they already purchased this for one month's worth of usage they have purchased this purchased and um, they're running out and uh, panicking to buy water bottles and so many other things yeah, yesterday I, I wanted to buy some um, uh, dishwasher soap and uh, it, was, it just ran out. The whole aisle was empty, even dishwasher soap. Maybe they, can, they must have found out from YouTube how to change dishwasher soap into um, an, uh, <laughs> sanitizer. There are some in YouTube posts you can see all these uh, new videos coming up how to make sanitizers with, with certain things at home. So they want to calm themselves by hoarding, making feel secure, uh, still they feel insecure. And there is like um, big lines to buy even guns to feel themselves secure. There's great fear of death. When I start um, looking at the news, especially the coronavirus count that's going on, how many people have died, every hour they start looking. 
every um, every maybe every day they see like how much how many people died and how many people died in US um, you might ask the question how come you know that they are looking at it because I am looking at it <laughs> also watching the count too. <laughs> okay so that's why I know I am guessing that they also may be looking at, at least every day in US in California how many people died how many people um, were infected with the virus there is this great fear of death this panic people don't want to come out of the house because they fear death but are you truly prepared for death is the question the Bible gives answers because this world is not our home we are just passing by there is a world that is there though we do not see it we know that there is a world that is to come and Jesus is giving answers to all of our problems as we panic as we fear for death we don't truly prepare ourselves to meet our Lord the Bible tells us that we have to give an account to our Creator unto whom we have to do in Hebrews chapter uh, 4 let's Hebrews chapter 4 was um, Thirteen says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. All things are open and naked unto God, unto God, unto whom we have to deal with God, or as we have to give an account before God. We all have to give an account before God. And are you truly prepared to give an account to this God? who is true, who is real. He is the, uh, John, we just read that John is saying that the Son of God has come first John chapter 5 verse 20. We just read it saying that the Son of Man, the Son of God has come to give us an understand that we might know Him that is true, that we might be in Him that is true. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ has come to give us an understanding to know Him personally. But are we prepared? Are we prepared to meet him, to leave this world? The Bible tells us that only through Jesus that we can come to the Father in the right standing. As Jesus is saying that I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. So God's answer to a troubled heart is that God, that the people should trust God and, re, and turn to Him in repentance and receive Him as their Lord and personal Savior. God gives us great assurance for His people. God gives us an eternal place of security, an eternal place of reunion. Here it says, in my father's house are many mansions, a permanent dwelling place. And um, Jesus is saying that he's preparing a place for you. And the Lord is saying that if he's preparing a place for you, he will come back. He's coming back again and he is going to receive us. Not only that, that, that we can be with him forever. The fears will be satisfied with God's safety in the, in the life to come, but also in this current world. God is saying that I will never, never, ever leave you nor forsake you. God is saying that I will go, I will be with you forever to the ends of the world. Matthew chapter 20 verse 28 verse 20 says the truth about his ever presence Matthew chapter 20 verse 28 verse 20 says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you that lo I am with you always God's presence God's not only 
for the world to come, but God assures that he will give us the safety. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our shade at our right hand. Psalm, the psalmist, Psalm 91 says that because he has made the Lord, which is my refuge in um, the Most High, the dwell, his dwelling place, Psalm 91 says, speaks the truth, that no evil shall befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. No evil, because you have set the Lord as your refuge, as your habitation, who is even David's uh, Lord and uh, habitation, the uh, Most High for David, if we no evil shall befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh the, thy dwelling. The God preserves his people. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The Lord, Psalm 121 speaks the truth. That the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. We are kept by the power of God. God is, is, is there to preserve us. Psalm um, chapter 4 verse 8 also says the same truth. At this current times like this, when there is so much insecurity in this world, so much of fear, Psalm 4 verse 8 says, Psalmist David is saying that I will both lay me down or he himself will lay down in peace and sleep for the Lord only shall make him dwell in safety. Only the Lord gives him safety. There's nothing else that can give him safety. Only God can give us safety and security. God is, God not only preserves us to the end, but also God also promises for an eternal dwelling place. Not only just promise of a permanent dwelling place, but here we see at this present times like this where people feel not only uh, scared of um, getting sick, people um, have no permanent places, but even in students in colleges where they are forced to leave their campuses and go back to their, to their homes. Some of the people don't have the, a permanent place to go back. Some of the students, they don't have proper parents to go back. And it's a big, um, a big thing for them to don't know where to go back. As the colleges and dorms close down, they don't know where to go back. There's no permanent dwelling place. And even if they go back, they have to stay alone in, uh, in an apartment like um, maintaining six feet distance. It's called shelter in the home, so you have to stay home. It's very hard and very difficult to stay away from others, especially we are social people. We like to, we live uh, because we are social beings. We cannot live in isolation. In this present times, God is promising us, not only in this current world, that He is going to never leave us nor forsake us, that we can have this beautiful fellowship with God, but also, as we leave this world, that we can be in the house of the Lord, in my Father's house, as Jesus is saying, with Christ forever. Where I am there, ye shall also be, that ye may be also be. And whether I go, you know not, and the way you know. As Jesus is saying that I'm going, and you know where I'm going, you know the place where I'm go going, and you know the way. And here Thomas sa says to the Lord, in verse 5, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we even know the way? We don't know where you're going, Lord, and how can we even know the way? And this is when Jesus gives this beautiful I am statements. God not only gives us this assurance of protection, the assurance that He is going to provide for us, this assurance of His presence, but also he, here we see our Lord speaking these words of life to us. 
the I am's, the seven I am's that were mentioned in John's Gospel, this is the sixth I am. As Jesus said in John's Gospel, saying that I am the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse um, 48, speaking about this. And then John chapter 8, verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. And he also says, Jesus says that I am the gate. 10, John's Gospel chapter 10, verse 9 says, I am the door. Or through Jesus, we can enter into his pastures, we can enter into his sheepfold, that we can enter into his kingdom. That, And he also says that he is the good shepherd, 8.14. John 8.14 says, he is the good shepherd, I am the good shepherd. And when he was raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus declares that he is the resurrection and the life, that he is the very source of for a new generation of people that he is the resurrection that he has the power and uh, he is the very expression of resurrection that he has power to lay down his life and he has power to um, take it back John's Gospel chapter 10 verse um, 17 and 18 onwards speaking about the Lord who is the Lord of life in him is life and that life is the light of all men. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. In him was life. That is a true life. That is eternal life. The we can also can receive it. The message of the Bible is that whosoever shall believe on him, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son begotten from, from the Father, he came down to die for us, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but shall have the gift of everlasting life. This is a gift of true life that only our Lord has. God is saying here in, in the sixth I Am statements, in John's Gospel saying, I am the way. As Thomas is asking, what, we don't even know where you're going, Lord. How can We don't even know the place. How can we know the way? And here Jesus is saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying that he is the way, the, the only way. By believing in Jesus Christ, by trusting in Jesus Christ, by observing to keep his commandments, and by knowing him personally, as we just looked, that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are united in Christ Jesus, that we it will enter into the way of Christ. Jesus Christ is the way that we, by following him and believing him in repentance, that we are in Christ, then we can receive this way, that we can be in the way. That is the expression of saying that Jesus is the only way to reach the Father, to reach, the, to know, to get the favor of God. That only through Jesus Christ we can have our sins forgiven. Only through Jesus Christ. Only through this way alone. Many times um, there's so many false preaching going on. There's so many false doctrines saying that um, you can go through Jesus or you can go through somebody or you can go through um, uh, as, uh, Jesus and somebody. But here the Bible is very clear. Peter himself, when Jesus said um, later on when he was fully converted, Peter himself addresses the crowd in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, clearly understanding what Jesus meant by he is the way, the, way, the truth and the life. Peter addressing this, this crowd in the sermon um, saying, neither there is salvation in any other, for there is no, there's none other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. For none other name under heaven given among men, whereby there is no other name, there is no other way. Only through this rock can we receive salvation. But uh, here Jesus also says that he is the truth. By knowing him, by knowing him, by knowing Christ, who is a true God, we can reach the Father. When we say the truth, what does it mean by the truth is when Jesus calling himself the truth or in um, John's Gospel chapter 1, speaking about Jesus, chapter 1 verse 14 says, He is full of grace and truth. John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 14 says, We beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is full of grace and truth. When Jesus says, I am the truth, he refers himself as the truth. He is full of truth. The Bible tells us that his words are true words. Many places in Mark 12, 32 and John 8, 40, many other places. And let's read Revelation 21, verse 5. <clears throat> and he sat upon the throne, and he that sat upon the throne, throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto them, Write these words, for these words are true and faithful. His words are true. Jesus Christ taught the way of God in truth. He spoke about truth. He came to bear witness of truth. So what is truth when Jesus says that I am truth? It is an expression that in Jesus dwelleth everything and uh, that we can uh, think about truth. He is an expression of truth by seeing Jesus we can see that he is the source of all truth. It, it's a, by seeing Jesus, we can see the quality of what truth is. Uh, by seeing Jesus, we can see that, this, that he is, is constant, that is not changing by Jesus. We can measure being Jesus as a perfect standard for our righteousness, for righteousness, for all righteousness, for all reality. He is the source of all reality. He is the source of all standards that we can measure. He is the source of all righteousness. He is a perfect righteousness that we can see in Jesus, that we can measure everything else based on who he is and what he is, and based on his faithfulness, based on his, his uh, unchangeableness, being constant, being real and true God, then we, we can measure everything else that is not true and that is in falsehood. Jesus also says that he is the way, the truth and the life. Eternal life can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. He is the way, the truth and the life. There is no other way. Jesus says that he is the light of the world. Jesus says in John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 24, Truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. He that believeth on, he that heareth God's word and believeth on God who sent Jesus shall have everlasting life that we can only be found, that we can only find in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the message for this morning is that as his dear children, God 
Our Lord Jesus Christ desires that we should not be shaken when this world is going through difficult and troubles are everywhere in this world, that we should not be shaken like how the ungodly and those who don't know the Lord are troubled in their hearts. We should continue to trust in God and continue to trust in Jesus Christ and continue to believe in Him that all things work together for His people, for their good, to them that, God, that love God and to them that are called according to His purpose. And also, not only that, that we should, um, as children, that we should observe to do His commandments. Observe to do His commandments. And we should walk in truth, believing that we have the Spirit of God in us, the Spirit of truth in us, the Holy Spirit that is given to us, that also we should walk in His way, that we should walk in truth and in the newness of life that God has given us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, that we should also walk in the newness of life being led by the Spirit of God. As rivers flowing or rivers of living waters flowing from our belly, that we should also walk in the new, newness of life that springs forth to this glorious hope of the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we will be with Him forever and ever. Just for a little while, you have to endure sufferings, as the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, in the eyes of the Lord, it is just a small moment of difficult times as we go through this journey of life, as we go through this pilgrimage that we are in to reach the final destination of being with the Lord forever. The Bible tells us that verse, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. This is the promise of God. And this is a promise that Jesus is saying that if I go there to prepare a place for you, I will come back to receive you. As God's children, a little while that we should be patient. One of the requirements for a believer is that we have to endure. We should be patient. Let the work of affliction make, it, make, its, final, make its course to its completion. So that what God wants to do in our lives, God may continue to do it. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 says, For if for ye have need of patience, for after ye have done the will of God, ye may receive the promise. After ye have done the will of God, as obedient children, we should follow and observe to keep his commandments. And as we have this newness of life, that we should walk in truth and in the newness of life. By following his commandments, as we have received this Holy Spirit, let us also strive to walk in Christ, in truthfulness, and in the newness of life. Let's uh, pray and ask God to have his word be applied into our hearts and lives, that we may live a life that is uh, without fear, but God's peace may reign in our hearts. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, may reign in our hearts and lives through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for giving us these words of life. Though they are simple, Lord, they are so profound in, um, in value, Lord, and so profound to our lives. As you said, that let not our hearts be troubled, and to believe in God, and also to believe in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we looked into your word, that you are the way, and there is no other way, given among men, whereby we shall be saved, and you are the truth. Only in, in you, to, only by living in, in this true God, and by the spirit of truth that dwells in your children, 
that we can reach the Father and you are the life, Lord, only through your true life that we can have abundance of life, that we can have abundant life, that we may, Lord, uh, abide in you and to observe to keep all your commandments and to be patient. Uh, as your word says, only for a little while and he that shall come will come and shall not tarry. You promise that, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. To give, to give every man according to his word shall be as your word, according to his work shall be as you said, that you are coming soon. Help us, Lord, to endure holding on to you in faith. Lord, bless this word that as your dear children, Lord, help us, Lord, to live a life that is pleasing and that is acceptable unto you, looking unto you for your glorious appearing, the great God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as you have purified unto yourselves. Help us, Lord, to purify ourselves and be ready for your coming. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.